It's my pleasure uh, to introduce our speaker today, uh, Tamir Bashar, who is um, coming to us from uh, UIUC. Um, <clears throat> Tamir is a pillar in the game theory and control community and has contributed uh, numerous foundational results and his work has been recognized by numerous awards. So I'll just name a couple. So Tamir is a member of the National Academy of Engineering and was awarded the IEEE Millennium Medal in 2000 and the most recently the Wilbur Cross Medal uh, from Yale in 2021. He's also an IEEE Fellow and holds numerous honorary doctorates internationally, which is a clear indication of his contribution to science and engineering. And he's played a fundamental role in shaping the control system society, uh, having so served in several uh, governing capacities, including being the president. And his research broadly focuses on game theory and control. And today we'll get to hear about his uh, recent work on policy optimization for robust control. So I'll turn it over to you, Tamir. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. And, uh, and thanks for the invitation. It's, uh, I, I uh, had a few choices in terms of topics and I decided to talk about this uh, recent work that, that we have been doing, uh, we have done and, and still continue to be doing, and which is also uh, related to uh, uh, some recent work that uh, several uh, faculty and students at UW have worked on, particularly with uh, Professor Fazel and, and uh, Professor Mesbahi and also Professor Ratliff. And uh, so this is a joint work with uh, a, a student of mine, Kai Ching Zhang, who is the, the main driver actually of this topic. And, and there are several other sort of more recent results, which I don't think I'll have time to touch on. Uh, he's, he'll be graduating fairly soon. And, uh, and also my colleague at Illinois, Bin Hu, was involved in this, uh, in this research. So uh, let me uh, share with you the, uh, the outline of the talk. So first I'll uh, talk about, uh, in general terms, about reinforcement learning and policy optimization, and then the, which are hot topics uh, today, not only in control, but, but also in uh, machine learning and, uh, and optimization uh, in particular. I'll talk about uh, uh, policy optimization specifically tailored to controller design. <clears throat> and then I'll bring in an, an uh, element of robustness into uh, these uh, uh, formulations. And uh, uh, there are different ways of approaching robustness in control system design. And, uh, uh, but they are all connected, in fact, even though they were introduced uh, uh, sort of independently and using different paths. One of them is the mixed design, uh, which is uh, optimizing the H2 norm uh, subject to some robustness bound, and that's provided by an H infinity norm. Another one is uh, risk sensitive controller design. And uh, yet another one is, uh, uh, in fact, looking at the uh, robustness issues in uh, controller design uh, through the lens of uh, uh, games, zero sum games, uh, where you view the unknowns as adversaries. So I'll touch upon that. And this actually falls under the topic of robust <coughs> adversarial reinforcement learning. So one of the, the, the main difficulties, uh, in fact, there are two difficulties in uh, uh, developing a theory of policy optimization uh, in such problems is that what you are trying to optimize is a non-convex function. This, this is also the case in, in LQR, linear quadratic regulator problem, if you are optimizing over the, uh, the gain matrix. But one thing that also arises in this case, uh, in this 
a mixed design problem as well as risk sensitive controller design is, is the lack of coercivity. And, and I'll uh, clarify this as we go along. And we have developed what we call implicit regularization to overcome that. So this is one of the uh, contributions of this work. And, and I'll talk about uh, global convergence results for, uh, I'll introduce three uh, policy optimization algorithms. Two of them enjoy this uh, global convergence property together with uh, uh, coercivity and uh, all the implicit regulation. And, uh, and, and this, uh, the convergence is, is both sublinear as well as super linear if you are closer to the uh, solution point then it's it's super linear and that the this robust adversarial reinforcement learning is uh, uh, something that has game theory built into it and then I'll talk about a few extensions and then and then conclude so uh, reinforcement learning as I as I mentioned is uh, a hot topic it has achieved tremendous success in sequential decision making, not only in controller design, but in macro decision problems, and and in also continuous control tax such as game of go, video games, as well, and robotics, and and most of these uh, reinforcement learning techniques uh, hinge on the policy optimization. That's the provides the algorithmic framework for this. And uh, uh, you, you have a function approximation coming in and, and, and it can handle large continuous spaces. It's very easy to implement in general and it's scalable to high dimensional control systems. And, and it also enables, and we have done some work on this also, uh, data-driven and sample-based uh, search. Some, Prominent examples in this is the Rainforce, uh, actor critic algorithms, natural policy gradient, deterministic policy gradient, trust region policy optimization, as well as proximal policy optimization. So let me just, I know that there are uh, uh, undergraduate students here who may not have taken any course also in optimal control in the, in the audience. So let me have a, give a, a very brief, uh, quick introduction to uh, optimal control. And uh, so what do you have? You have a dynamical system. Uh, this is, I'm doing everything in discrete time. You could also uh, develop, and we have developed counterparts of these in continuous time as well. And uh, so, so you have a discrete time system, U is your controller. And and uh, uh, and x is the state of multidimensional state. The control for each time t belongs to some constraint set, and you have a performance index. And this is an infinite horizon problem, and uh, and and you uh, want to minimize this. You want to pick your control u so as to minimize this uh, j of u. And so the policy optimization approach to these problems is that uh, you want, instead of minimizing uh, over u, which u belongs to an infinite dimensional space, you uh, in fact parameterize uh, uh, u as a feedback controller. That is, this is the, if uh, mu is your policy or control law, uh, you parameterize it in terms of uh, a parameter theta, which is a vector uh, parameter, and then you optimize over theta. If, you, if your parameterization is successful and if your optimization with respect to theta is very uh, converges, then, then, then of course you obtain uh, something which is very close to the minimum value of J of U. So for the linear quadratic regulator, uh, we have uh, f is linear and c is quadratic in both x and u jointly and uh, and the uh, uh, control set is the entire m-dimensional euclidean space then we know that the solution to this problem is is linear in the state so 
So you have a very natural parametrization here. You're not losing anything at the parametrization st uh, stage. If you have a, a much more general nonlinear uh, control problem, then the parametrization will lead to uh, some, some loss of performance. But here you don't. And uh, uh, so you have K is a matrix. So you, this is your parameter. So you, you, so you can substitute this into your cost function and optimize with respect to K. And uh, uh, now this is, even though this is in an infinite, in a Hilbert space, if you look at this, <clears throat> this optimization problem with respect to U is, uh, is convex. Uh, when you have it with respect to K, once you parameterize it this way, then it's no longer a convex function of K. So that, that brings in some difficulty, but that can be overcome. And uh, now the downside of looking uh, at controller designs only uh, from the point of view of say the linear quadratic regulator and so on, where you don't account for uncertainty, modeling uncertainty is that the solution may not be robust. And, uh, and the LQR is it's well known that is not robust to unmodeled uh, dynamics or modeling imprecisions in the in F function uh, or the, any disturbance that may enter into the system and so on. Or noise to, uh, to you may not have access to X uh, precisely, there may be some noise but you may not be aware of that. So uh, in order to uh, overcome this uh, uh, disadvantage of uh, LQR, uh, robust optimal control has been introduced and, and which is where you optimize a certain objective functional along with some guarantee of robustness. That is if you, if you, are, uh, if you have designed something by ignoring the uh, imprecisions, then, then, then you have some uh, sort of uh, minimum sensitivity to the presence of such imprecisions. So there are uh, many ways, as I said at the beginning of modeling robustness, one is with sensitive control, I'll uh, make that clear. The, the other one is uh, H infinity norm constraint uh, from robust control theory, solving the H infinity optimal control problem. And the other one is using uh, the, looking at the problem as one where the disturbance is controlled by an adversary and, and you are doing a design for the worst possible values of that input. And that uh, brings us to the framework of zero sum games. And, and the interesting thing is that the, all these three can be unified within this H2H infinity mix design. So, so what that is, is that the, you are minimizing the H2 norm or some, some bound on the H2 norm, some upper bound, subject to some H infinity norm constraint. Okay, so, so the challenge in doing uh, policy optimization for these problems as in LPR is that it's a constraint non-convex optimization problem. And uh, so uh, the reinforcement learning and many optimal control problems can generally be written in this form. You are minimizing something and the K, I use here K because I'll be talking about linear controllers where the gain is, is K. So, but you can view K as the parametrization. And uh, so you have a parameterized policy and or controller and uh, which belongs to some, uh, a, a set and, and we'll say, I'll say what that set looks like. And you want to optimize J <clears throat> and K is the constraint set. The constraint set is important, but sometimes it's implicit, but it has to be uh, accounted for. Now for the linear quadratic regulator as an example, and uh, UW uh, has uh, actually, there has been considerable work on this pioneering work on developing uh, policy optimization methods for LQR uh, in discrete time again, and you, you can have the continuous time counterpart of this as well. You have this linear system and you have a quadratic cost function 
and you want to minimize the, uh, the square root of the cost function uh, using uh, u equals to minus k xt and so your optimization is with respect to k. Now, what you need is that you cannot pick an arbitrary k. Uh, you need to pick a k which stabilizes the system. If the system is not stable, uh, stable under controllability uh, as, and observability assumptions involving a, b, and q, then, then, then you will uh, jk. You cannot uh, actually talk about minimization. So, so it's essential that you restrict yourself to stabilizing gains. And so what that means is that once you substitute this into the uh, uh, dynamics, system dynamics, then, uh, then you have a feedback matrix uh, uh, A minus BK. You want all eigenvalues of this to be in the unit uh, circle. That's the spectral radius of this to be less than one. So this is your constraint in this specific case. And this is a non-convex constraint set. And uh, there are other examples of uh, uh, the script K that we can constrain that we can have. For example, you can have a, uh, introduce a bound on, on K. Uh, that is the gain cannot be higher than you. We are outside the domain of LQR, but, but that's again the, the motivation. And uh, or you can have safety constraints on states. For example, you can have constraints on X. X has to lie in a certain tube, for example. And, uh, and it should not leave that tube if that's a feasible constraint. So there are other types of constraints that one can introduce. Now, the, now I want to talk a little bit about the robustness issues. Uh, most control systems are definitely safety critical. And, and it's not only stability, but also the robustness that we are interested in. And, and uh, one way I uh, mentioned at the beginning that, that you may, uh, if you, are, you have a nominal plan, and, and, but there may be uh, precision uh, in the modeling of the plan. There may be uh, some uh, unmodeled part, for example. And, and so you the unmodeled part, we can, uh, let's call this a delta uh, perturbation around the plan. And so what you want is, so this is your original plan, generic plan, the G, and then you have a perturbation around the plan delta. So you want all for small perturbations, the plan to behave in, a, in an acceptable way. The, the, uh, and, and the way to model this is you look at the transfer function from the W uh, disturbance to the output, and let's call this T sub K. And, uh, and, uh, and what you want is uh, some sort of minimization of that, of that uh, gain from W to Z. And uh, so this G delta model covers many robustness considerations in control. You can have, for example, you can uh, model P as a time invariant system, but there could be uh, uh, time varying parameters uh, in it, or you could have parametric uncertainty. You have an A and B, but there are small sort of perturbations around the A and B matrices as delta A and delta B. You can have time varying delays and you can even have dynamical uncertainty of unknown model order that's that's all captured by by delta and uh, so uh, this uh, h infinity norm is uh, which i mentioned at the beginning is the is the core concept in robust control and this is due to to zames uh, going back to 1966 uh, the smoking theorem uh, which says that if the the norm of the uh, uh, this transfer function is less than some positive uh, quantity gamma. And if the perturbations, uh, this is in the discrete time from there is a continuous time counterpart of this also, uh, from L2 to L2 uh, is less than one over gamma, no? then the combined system G delta is input output stable. Okay, so, so that's what you would, you would want to, to achieve through your controller design. So therefore, 
uh, what we have is in addition to, uh, so going back to the linear systems, in addition to this stability constraint, we also have the robustness constraint. And this is uh, uh, what we call a strong robust stability. And uh, so, the, so the question is, can you design algorithms, policy optimization algorithms uh, for finding the best K uh, for minimizing a certain performance index, which will also satisfy these two constraints. <coughs> Now note that as if gamma as gamma goes to infinity, then this constraint is no longer active, so you end up with the LQR. So for in fact for very large values of gamma, this problem is no different from just uh, uh, looking for the uh, a stabilizing uh, gain k. So so the important thing is. Uh, and this also, of course, applies to, to the stability, uh, not only to robust stability, is how can we enforce when we do policy optimization and develop an algorithm, and, and you want to make sure that at every point of iteration of the algorithm, when you generate new values for K, you maintain this stability or robust stability. And this is very important in reinforcement learning. That is, during the learning process, you do not want to leave the constraints up. And, uh, <clears throat> and the second issue is uh, the global convergence guarantees and the rates of convergence. Okay, so these are the two uh, issues that I'm going to talk, or three issues, if you like the convergence uh, and the rates of convergence are of course uh, come together and uh, and and not not leaving so convergence is what happens in the limit but but you also want to have during the transient behavior you want to make sure that uh, uh, constraints are satisfied okay so that uh, brings me to robust mixed design and uh, so, so we have actually, so, so I'm, uh, we had a, a, a paper the first time we uh, introduced uh, this approach was uh, in, at, a, at a conference, was at a Berkeley conference. The, uh, it's in the proceedings of the uh, machine learning research. This is the L4DC conference, which was held in 2020. And, uh, uh, and then there is an extended archive version of this. Now, uh, the, the conference version or the MLR version uh, talks about the discrete time problem only, but the archive version uh, has the full development for the continuous time version as well. So let me just uh, uh, introduce the problem that we have looked at. So this is a discrete time. I note that now I have this perturbation. This is the, this is the noise that comes into the system that uh, brings in robustness. And then in continuous time, you have the same thing. There is no, I'm talking about noise or the disturbance, but there is no stochasticity here. I'll bring in stochasticity when we talk about risk sensitivity. And then this is the controlled output, both of continuous time and, and discrete time. And, uh, uh, and a common assumption is that the uh, E transpose C is that, that that's, there are no cross terms in the, in the alpha. If there are cross terms, it's not difficult to handle that situation. And then the transfer function can be written in this way. And, uh, and actually in the, the continuous time, Laplace domain, this is what you have, depending on the gain matrix K, and uh, and in the z domain for the discrete time problem, this is what it looks like. And uh, so the H infinity norm is uh, either from capital L two, the Hilbert space square integrable functions in the continuous time or the discrete time sequences uh, square integrable from W to Z from the disturbance to the output. And, uh, and the norm, uh, H infinity norm is defined in for the continuous time problem 
is the maximum singular value of this transfer function. And in the discrete time, the, it's counterpart is here. So uh, I'm going to discuss the discrete time setting. Uh, uh, and for the, as I indicated, for the continuous time setting results, you can refer to this archive paper. Okay, so, so this is the problem that we, are, uh, we want to solve. Minimize JK subject to uh, these two constraints. So uh, it, uh, there are different uh, uh, forms of JK for, these, for this problem. And, uh, and, and they all provide sort of upper bounds for the H2 norm. I have given some references here. And, and there is this form, they all involve solutions of Riccati equations given K for each given K. And, uh, and, and there is a third form also that we discussed, but I'm not, I'm not going to bring that up here. And, uh, and so these all provide sort of upper bounds for the H2 norm. So what we are uh, interested in is in minimizing this or this, uh, subject to these constraints, okay? And then given that, of course, the PK is the solution of this Riccati equation. And uh, so uh, now let me make a digression and talk a little bit about risk sensitive control because that here uh, there is a direct connection to one of these performance indices that I introduced. Uh, from the risk sensitive control. And this goes back to, uh, this is LEQG, E stands for exponential, linear exponential quadratic Gaussian problem. It was introduced by Jacobson, who showed the connection to zero sum games in his 1973 paper. And uh, so what that is, is now you have a stochastic system. And you have the standard uh, AX plus BU term plus a noise coming in. And the noise is Gaussian with zero mean and some covariance X zero. Plus uh, X zero, the initial, initial state is Gaussian. And, uh, and the noise itself uh, is a Gaussian sequence independent from uh, over time and uh, with uh, uh, zero mean and, and covariance W. And the covariant W is generally assumed to be positive definite. Otherwise uh, you have a singularity here. It's no longer a, a fully a stochastic system. So, so what uh, uh, this problem deals with is, uh, so, so it's a stochastic control problem in a sense. And, but you are not just, you are not uh, minimizing the expected value of this term, of course, over the an infinite horizon, maybe divided, you have to divide it by T, but an exponentiated version of it after multiplying it by a parameter beta. And, and so, so that brings in risk sensitivity because the values, uh, the trajectories or the values of this cost function, note that this is stochastic because W uh, is a stochastic uh, variable. And uh, uh, it, it emphasizes uh, uh, paths or, or values for this resulting from state trajectories that lead to higher values. So you are uh, in fact putting more weight over higher values. So protecting yourself is a decision maker. Let's say that U of T is the decision maker's control. You are protecting yourself against, against uh, uh, unfavorable uh, realizations of the, of the uh, system trajectory. And uh, so, so you exponentiate this, and then you can take the logarithm after you exponentiate it. And because it's stochastic, if this had been all deterministic, then the, then the log and x, of course, are inverses of each other, then it would be a risk neutral problem. And, uh, and then you divide it by, by beta uh, or, the, or, or beta over two, just to normalize it and then divide it by t so that this is a unit time. 
uh, quantity. Otherwise, this will be infinite uh, because of the noise. Uh, and then you take the limb soup of it. So, so you minimize this uh, with respect to you. And uh, what one can show, first of all, is that uh, this a solution will not uh, exist. In fact, this is not going to be finite for all values of data. The data is known as the risk sensitivity parameter, and you cannot be too cautious. If you are too cautious, if you think that you are going to protect yourself only against the, the, the very high values of the realization of the state trajectory, then you cannot do anything. So, so this is, uh, uh, you cannot be too pessimistic if, if I have to uh, uh, put it within the context of decision-making. And, and so therefore this is the degree beta star is the, is, the, uh, is the upper limit on beta. And what one can show is that uh, for each beta less than beta star, the minimum will actually exist. And there is a, will be a unique optimal controller, uh, which is linear in the state. And, uh, and uh, further, if the, what's the connection of this to now the mixed H2H H infinity design that I had introduced? If I take Q to be C transpose C and W to be D transpose, note that D was the matrix multiplying the disturbance, deterministic disturbance in the H infinity uh, constraint problem, and, and you take U to be minus KXT, then the, this feasibility, that is the, the conditions under which you have a solution to this is equivalent to this. Of course, you need stability and, and you have the H infinity norm less than one over square root of beta. Of course, we cannot talk about H infinity norm in the, in the, in the case of LEQG, but mathematically speaking, this is exactly what we have. So, so there is a complete equivalence between the two. So we may, instead of solving the mixed H to H infinity problem, we may as well solve this and the solution would definitely apply to the other. And uh, uh, so, so this result says that it suffices to search over linear time invariant controllers. And so, so we minimize over K this uh, cost function. And, uh, and, and again, the, uh, there is, uh, uh, for each fixed k, uh, there is a, a, an underlying, uh, uh, in this case, uh, uh, another Riccati equation. And uh, it's Riccati, it would have been Lyapunov if, uh, if we didn't have this term, beta term. And uh, so, uh, so what one can show now the question is what the, what am I uh, is there a closed form expression for this that I can use and and indeed there is and this is one thing this result was not available in the literature so we had to develop this in the in the paper that uh, for any LTI state feedback controller uh, uh, such that this generalized algebraic Riccati equation admits a non-negative definite solution, which is stabilizing, that is, this condition is satisfied. And if it further satisfies this, because you are taking an inverse here, then JK has this form, which is exactly the form uh, of the mixed H2H H infinity problem, okay? With a, which was an upper, upper uh, bound for that, that we wanted to minimize. So that's, so this is the connection. So I may as well, if I'm, if I'm uh, minimizing this, developing a policy optimization for this, then I would be solving the LEQG problem from the policy optimization point of view. And that also solves the, the mixed H to H infinity problem that I had formulated. Okay, so uh, connections to other models, this covers the maximum entropy H infinity control this exact uh, form. And uh, it also uh, uh, similar to the LQ zero sum dynamic games. Okay. And uh, now for the, for the case of uh, dynamic games, uh, uh, we have a, a, 
we bring in again an, an active uh, uh, adversary. Uh, let me call this VT. But now we have a, a performance index uh, that is uh, uh, put some weight on the effort of the adversary in the negative way, multiplied by multiplied by gamma squared. So, so we know that uh, this uh, is solving this problem is equivalent to solving the LEQG problem and vice versa. But you may say here I have two controllers. One is for the, the real controller, which was also in the LEQG as well as mixed H2H infinity, but there's also an active control by the or strategy by the adversary. And uh, so for the optimum, so here you are looking for a saddle point or the Nash equilibrium uh, between the uh, adversary and the, and the controller. Now, if I take beta to be equal to gamma, uh, one over gamma squared, then the optimal policies that is what provides an inf soup for this, which also turns out to be uh, soup inf, that is there exists a saddle point. The controller here is again of the same form as in the LEQG minus kx. But for zero sum games, there is an additional thing, which is that the VT is uh, the, the, uh, the worst uh, from the point of view of the minimizer that the adversary can do is to pick a, again a linear controller, uh, which is minus LX. Okay, so, so if, you, if you know exactly what L is, uh, and substitute it here and, and then minimize with respect to you, then you obtain the solution to the LEQG problem. Okay, so, so we have, uh, I'm not sure whether I'll have time to discuss uh, sort of uh, policy optimization for, the, uh, for this zero sum game, because in this case, the policy optimization will involve not a single parameter, but two parameters and uh, K and L. And, and, and uh, we have shown that actually, if you iterate between K and L, either uh, uh, simultaneously or sequentially, uh, then that does not uh, lead to convergence. So, so you have to uh, do the iteration with respect to L much more frequently on a faster time scale than the one with respect to K. But we'll see whether I'll have time for that. So, so again, as gamma goes to infinity, and, and note that as gamma goes to infinity, beta goes to zero, then this, all of this reduces to LQR and you are minimizing JK uh, subject to uh, the stability constraint. Okay, so, so I want to uh, introduce three algorithms. So, so this, is, uh, this is the problem that, that we are now, uh, uh, faced with uh, from the policy optimization point of view. And, and I have already motivated as to how that this type of a, a, a cost function that one has to minimize uh, arises in different contexts. And, uh, and, and all are connected to the solution of this generalized algebraic Riccati equation. So this is what I want to uh, uh, focus on. Now, the, the landscape is the, is the following. The LQR, the, the University of Washington group has worked on this. Uh, here we have a, a, a spectral radius condition only, the stability condition. Whereas in the H2H infinity control or in the, in the LEQG, we have a, a constraint set which also involves robustness. Now, the, there is a difference between the two landscapes and, and which is the, the following and, and which uh, actually uh, uh, avoids one to uh, uh, use some of the same techniques uh, which uh, makes it impossible to use some of the same techniques as in LQR in developing uh, and uh, in developing uh, uh, convergent algorithms, uh, where the at every iteration you stay within the within the uh, constraint set. 
Now in the LQR, as you, uh, uh, if you go in the direction of the gradient uh, or, the, or the negative gradient, you are minimizing, uh, then, then uh, you, never, you never leave the, the constraint set. That is the stability is already achieved. If you are, if you are approaching the boundary, then then the uh, the stability condition is is violated. So you know that that is not, and so the algorithm would never force you to the boundary. Whereas in the case of H two H infinity control, it's quite possible if you go in the direction of the of the negative of the gradient that. You can reach the boundary and, and the cost does not go to infinity, but you have violated the H infinity uh, robustness constraint. Okay, so, so, uh, so this lemma says uh, this captures the landscape, which is different from the, uh, from the one in LQR. Uh, we have non convexity in addition to non convexity. This is not surprising. We also have non coercivity. Which means that the H two H infinity misdesign design problem over K is non-convex and non-coercive, which means that as K goes to the boundary of K uh, uh, of this constraint set, uh, J K does not necessarily approach infinity. So from the, your algorithm, you cannot tell whether whether you are violating the constraint or not. Okay, and. Uh, uh, this is in contrast to LQR, the JK descent cannot ensure feasibility. Then the question is how can we ensure and enforce uh, the constraint during the learning uh, phase? So there are three, uh, these are the uh, uh, algorithms, the LQR versions of these were introduced uh, in the in the well-known uh, ICML paper by uh, Professor Farzel and Mesbai, and uh, and this is a, a, a sort of a generalizing that uh, them to the robustness uh, framework. So you have the policy gradient uh, is one, and and this is just uh, as as the name implies. You take the gradient of J. And then you, you have a step size. This is the, you start with a, a K at any point in time, and then this generates a new K, K prime. Okay, and then the gradient of J is, in, in our case, it can be computed in this way, where lambda uh, is the unique solution of this Lyapunov equation. And the natural policy gradient is one where uh, you have, you multiply this by, the inverse of lambda k, which means that you don't have this lambda k here. The Gauss-Newton one uh, is one where you also pre-multiply this by r plus b transpose b k tilde b inverse. And uh, uh, so uh, we studied the uh, sort of the, uh, these three algorithms from the uh, point of view of uh, convergence. But, but more importantly, uh, the, uh, whether they satisfy at every stage of the algorithm, the constraint, the given constraint. And, uh, and natural policy gradient as again, this is from the uh, University of Washington, uh, an archive paper, and uh, is, is policy gradient on a Riemannian manifold. That's how it was motivated. And which is the same here, and uh, Gauss Newton with when eta is one half the step size is at uh, one half, it reduces the policy iteration for LQ games. So, uh, so uh, there. Are, how do we regulate? The, the, how can we make sure that iterates k n are confined to uh, the constraints that we have robust stability? Now, one way uh, uh, one in optimization normally does this is, is to project onto K. But in this case, the script K is non-convex, so that cannot be done. And what we have shown is that the policy gradient and Gauss-Newton methods implicitly regularize the iterates. That is, they preserve robust stability automatically, whereas the uh, the regular policy gradient does not. 
Okay. So the so the main result and the details. I'm not going to go into the proofs here. The details are, are in those papers, and uh, again in the discrete time setting. The if the step sizes in these two algorithms satisfy the following uh, conditions for the Gauss Newton eta step size has to be less than or equal to one half. And for the natural policy gradient, it has to be less than or equal to uh, some term. Note that the K0 uh, is an uh, initial choice for K, uh, which satisfies the constraint, okay? And, uh, uh, and which, so the assumption is that the, the problem is feasible. So you can always find that and a, a value for k which satisfies the which belongs to script k then then under these two uh, with these two step sizes uh, if k is uh, in the constraint set then at the next iteration k prime is also in the constraint set and uh, so so what this shows is that the general descent directions of j do not work but certain directions do in this case and uh, uh, now the, the proof highlights, I'm going, I, I think I'll be running out of time. So, so I, I won't go into the proof. So we make use of the bounded real lemma and then I'll, I will go very quickly over this. And, uh, and our proof is based on LMIs. It's an LMI based uh, proof technique. Uh, uh, we use bounded real lemma to connected to Riccati equation and then from there to strict Riccati inequalities. And, uh, and, and then the theorem. So, so that was the, uh, the convergence. The, <coughs> the rate of convergence is the uh, result is the following captured in the following theorem. Suppose that uh, you, you start with an initial K, which is in the constraint set, uh, which is bounded. And, uh, and, and assume that this pair is controllable at this stationary point K. And, and you can uh, have by stationary point K, there exists actually, we can show that uh, a unique uh, stationary point K, which is also the optimum one. Uh, then under the step size choices, uh, I have introduced both the Gauss-Newton and the natural policy gradient update Converge to the global optimum with an O1 over N rate. Okay. And uh, this controllability assumption was made in Mustafa and Bernstein. But if we are interested in the LEQG, it's automatically satisfied. So we don't need this controllability assumption in that case. And uh, in the LQR, there was a global gradient domination. And this is the paper that I, I mentioned, ICML 18. And uh, uh, here uh, we have only uh, one over n, the order of one over n rate globally. And uh, if you are around the optimum, then you have faster local rates. Okay. And, and we have uh, quite a number of simulations that we have done in the paper, you can find more. And, and this is one where the initialization is away from the boundary. And, and uh, I'm not sure whether we are able to read this, uh, but the red one is the gradient one. And, uh, and the blue one is the natural gradient, the Gauss-Newton, this one, and this is 10 to the five. And you have the Gauss-Newton with step size one half is the, uh, oh no, is this one. And uh, uh, so this is the average, this is the gradient norm squared. So you will, expect the gradient to decrease and uh, here the decrease is the fastest and uh, and this is the difference between the uh, optimum value of j and jk of course this has to be positive and and this uh, shows whether uh, the uh, uh, constraint h infinity norm constraint is violated or not this is the gamma value so it does not violate it, it doesn't go outside this thing. So the, the algorithm that we have fixed. And uh, um, uh, if we are near the boundary, uh, 
of uh, K. So then the that we choose uh, the infinitesimal step size eta for uh, uh, policy gradient is that we have this a three dimensional system and the step sizes are, are picked as follows. And here you can see that the gradient actually violates the H infinity norm. So it goes outside the constraints. Whereas the, the others, the natural gradient and Gauss Newton, they are all, uh, they all stay within the constraints throughout the iteration. And the, and the gradient norm is, is decreasing and the difference between JK and JK star is also decreasing. So uh, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, this uh, H infinity control is connected to LQ zero sum games. And, and so what one does in this case, I briefly mentioned this, that uh, you, you are looking for the Nash equilibrium or saddle point equilibrium of a cost function. And, uh, and we can take, we know that the uh, optimum solution in this case the, is linear for, for both uh, the controller and the adversary. And, and so therefore the parameter optimization problem in this case is one where you substitute for U and V uh, as uh, in terms of K and L. Now you have two sets of parameters, K and L, and then you uh, solve for this problem. You minimize with respect to K, maximize with respect to L. And we know that the min max uh, actually exists under some conditions involving RV, RU. And, and Q. And, uh, and, and this uh, actually the zero sum uh, uh, games, this is a, provides a baseline for competitive uh, multi agent reinforcement learning, just as LQR is for single agent reinforcement learning. And, uh, and this leads to robust adversarial RL. And, and, and it's, uh, it handles. The, it's well known that there is a simulation to real gap in RL. So by introducing an adversary within the MDP formulation, it hasn't done in, the, in this framework, but in an MDP formulation, you can actually uh, uh, cover that, that gap. And uh, so uh, note that, it, uh, so here one can introduce two different loops, the outer loop and then inner loop. Uh, outer loop involves K and the inner loop involves L. Now let's assume that for a given K, you are able to maximize over L accurately. And, and then the, if, if you're able to do that, then you substitute that in and then the, uh, the Riccati equation that one faces for the optimization in the outer loop is exactly the same one that, that I have in H to H infinity control. Okay, so that's the connection between these two. But the, the, the question is, uh, what if I cannot do an exact maximization with respect to L? Uh, so our recent paper uh, handles or discusses that and, and does also a finite sample analysis uh, using derivative-free methods for solving this problem. But the important thing is that the, you cannot just iterate between K and L, uh, and, and that leads to instability and, and, and not to convergence. So, uh, so again, this is a non-convex, non-concave problem in, in KL and, and so on. So, so, uh, so here is, for example, if you do an alternating gradient and gradient descent a set over K and L, they often fail with when you randomly initialize. For example, here uh, you can see the this is the stability spectral radius condition. Things if you after a certain number of iterations, the year it's uh, uh, fifty thousand, uh, you think that things are going well, but all of a sudden it. It, if you take more iterations, it uh, diverges, and then this, this is violated. In all of these examples, you can see the same thing. And these iterations is uh, with respect to K. 
and uh, so so a, a deeper sort of analysis will have to go into these problems in order to prevent this from happening. And we have done this in, a, in the recent uh, neural information processing systems uh, uh, paper in 20, December 2022. Okay, so, uh, so it's important to uh, pick the right initialization, pick the right update rule and so on. But, but I think I'm running out of time. So, so I, I'm just going to uh, uh, go to concluding remarks now. So, uh, so what uh, I have discussed and based on our recent paper is that is a sort of a better theoretical understanding of PO methods in learning for robust control as well as robust resensitive uh, reinforcement learning. And, uh, and one way of introducing robustness is through H infinite norm constraints, but that's also equivalent to introducing robustness to uh, risk sensitivity. And uh, uh, I have uh, shown a global convergence theory, or at least uh, discussed that. Uh, details are in the, in the paper. And uh, we have implicit regularization, which is an important property that in any learning uh, uh, scenario, you have to stay within the, the constraints that that you think are essential. And uh, uh, there's policy optimization methods guarantees uh, for linear quadratic uh, zero sum games, uh, parallel versus you know, outer loop updates, the parallel one does not work. And, and we are further continuing our work and we have actually one paper on the sample complexity uh, results, uh, mixed design for other types of dynamical systems. And, and the other thing is, is when we talk about H infinity norm, and the question is, can you develop algorithms which will minimize the H infinity norm uh, of, the, uh, uh, of, of TK, which is the uh, uh, mapping from the disturbance to the, the controlled output. Now, this is a generally a non-smooth problem. You can square this also, but also a, a minimum may not exist. And, and we, we know in, in many, actually in my book with Pierre Bernard, uh, uh, HM print optimal control, we have several uh, examples which uh, show that the gamma star, that is the optimal value for gamma, does not exist. You can get arbitrary, that's why, in all designs we do, uh, we pick a, uh, even if we know gamma star, we pick a gamma larger than gamma star, slightly larger than gamma star and do a design accordingly. This is like the beta star in the case of resensitive controller, uh, because we have, uh, there may not exist a control that achieves the, the uh, infimum of TK infinity. So, so that's, that's a challenge to, uh, and uh, there when one develops algorithms. And uh, at the higher level, how can we enforce safety robustness constraints on the fly for more general problems uh, and in model free area in general? And, and, and this is these are exciting future directions for research uh, going beyond the, the linear quadratic framework. Okay, so so I think I'll stop here. I'm sorry that I think I think I left only one minute for questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's all right. Um, so thank you for that that fantastic talk. Uh, I would definitely like it to open it up to anyone who would like to ask a question. You, it looks like you um, asked one in the chat. Would you like to um, ask it directly, or do you want me to read it? Oh, I can speak now. Okay. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for the presentation. So I have two questions. One, the first question is that a lot of optimal control problems can be written as LMI or SDP, and solved by convex optimization method. So I'm wondering if the, the problem you study can be also written as a convex problem and do that. And second is that you said the problem is not gradient dominant. So is it pro probably not for example, you can find a case that the objective is not gradient dominant. 
Uh, for the second, we, we haven't come across any situation where it would be gradient dominant. And so, so my uh, uh, general sort of, uh, if I have to bet, it's, it is not gradient dominant in that case. And, and regarding the LMI techniques, we use LMI in the proofs. And, uh, but uh, I know that there is, there is recent work again by uh, the UW uh, uh, researchers, I think uh, of Professor Fazel uh, on using LMI techniques uh, for uh, policy optimization in, in LQR. Uh, it's uh, uh, it may be possible, but but I'm not I'm not absolutely sure that you can obtain the kind of strong results that we have here. Thank you. So so basically, like what I mean is that like can you just write your problem as a convex optimization problem and just solve like convex use convex optimization method for it rather than like what is the benefit of using policy grid. Uh, it is. Uh, uh, it, it is not. I don't think it's possible to write it as a. As a that was not our approach. But but uh, I I'm aware of the the writing uh, 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 policy optimization problems as as LMIs, and uh, and uh, satisfying the uh, this. Uh, uh, this enforcement enforcement of the uh, the policy during the iterations to satisfy the constraints is uh, is not possible in the case of the LMI based approach. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Go ahead. Uh, thanks for the great talk, Professor Bashar. Um, what are your thoughts on policy optimization for general sum LQ games as opposed to zero sum? Um, that is, uh, uh, I mean, we have some work on uh, uh, Markov decision problems. That is the multi-agent reinforcement learning where uh, different agents have different uh, cost functions. That's within the framework of, of uh, uh, within the framework of uh, Markov decision problems, uh, but uh, the, we do have uh, uh, counter examples which show that these algorithms do not converge in the case of uh, to a Nash equilibrium when the when the players have. Uh, 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 different objective functions. In other words, problems which are not games which are not strategically equivalent to either uh, zero sum games or or uh, or uh, or team problems. Uh, the um, it is uh, uh, of course even in, in the zero, in the zero sum case. You, you cannot use policy optimization independently by the, if you have two active players and they are applying policy optimization algorithms that won't go anywhere. So, so you have to have a time scale separation between you have to wait for some accuracy for the response of one player until the other player responds. Now in zero sum games, if you have exact optimization by each player, then using the saddle point property, one can show that uh, in general, you would have convergence. Now in non-zero sum games, there are many uh, examples where uh, this type of an iteration does not converge to, uh, to an Nash equilibrium or may not converge at all, even in two player games because you may have oscillations, wild oscillations in the way the players respond. Now to overcome that, I mean, I have uh, uh, introduced in the past and I have seen this is also now becoming popular, 
uh, I have uh, uh, seen it at Berkeley. Uh, you bring in uh, uh, some uh, inertia into the problem. In other words, you you make the uh, the policies, the responses not depend only on the current value of the state, but also on the past values of the state. So 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 you, so you have uh, or on the past values of what the other players have done. For example, in the uh, let's say that the, we have the non-zero sum counterpart of the zero sum game I consider where you have K and L. Now you can K, if K responds to L, L responds to K, then you are not going to, uh, uh, this will not lead to convergence. Uh, but if K responds not only to the most recent iterate of L, but on an, on an average iterate as well, uh, in other words, if you have some uh, uh, averaging that uh, involves the, the past iterates, then there is the possibility that there are examples which show that, yes, that would convert, provided that you would, this is like the integral feedback in control theory. And, uh, and so this is, this is a, a very sort of, uh, uh, I think, uh, active research area right now. And I see a lot of potential in using uh, memory or integral feedback mm -hmm. in the responses of the players, which may lead to convergence in non-zero sum games. So that's one. Another uh, possibility is to go to the extreme of mean field games. Now, in the case of mean field games, you may be able to, because you are responding to a population, you are responding to an aggregate behavior to all other players. Now we have also, we have worked in that direction. We have started for about six months or so. We are looking into that. That has the potential of uh, uh, leading to much stronger convergence results than ones where you have only a finite population. Thank you for the answer. Yeah, this perspective on um, some of these methods using additional updates as being integral feedback, I, I like that connection quite a bit. I hadn't thought about it from that point of view, but certainly we're seeing a lot of that in, from the optimization community. So that's nice. Uh, is there any other questions? Because I think we're eating into Sam's time. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we'll wrap up. Thanks again for the, the wonderful talk. This was really good. Um, Thank you. Appreciate it.